Hey, my name is Dan. This particular video is a free video from my full course on HTML5 banner advertising using Adobe Animate. There are also free files and I've got some finished files that I save after each YouTube video that you can download from my website. Uh, I'll throw a link down in the description. All right, let's get on to some banner making. Hey, uh, this video we're gonna look at doing a pie chart. So it's a kind of a different flavor on the same thing we've been doing with the line graph and the bar graph. It's kind of like a reveal with a mask. So let's go and look how to do that. So I'm gonna create a new document. I'm going to make the background a color. It's always going to be green, right? And I'm going to now save it. Put it in my underscores. I'm getting faster as we go along. And uh, next thing, I'm gonna go back to my timeline. So I got my background, I'm going to draw my pie wedge. Actually, I'll draw the background. So there's gonna be two parts. There's going to be, uh, I'm gonna give it a fill of another green. Okay, so this is gonna be the backing part. I'm holding shift to get it to perfect, perfect circle. Okay, and that's going to be my um, pie background. Because what I want to do is, I want it to kind of appear out. So I want this pie to be here and then a slice to kind of like appear out of it and then poke out. So I'm gonna lock that one. I'm gonna make a new one and this is gonna be pie slice. Okay, and what we're gonna do is, there's a nice little trick with the oval tool. You can see there's a start and end angle. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, say it's uh, say this particular graph is going to be, um, let's say it's um, say 45, no, let's go to 60% of people. Wow, you have to work out the angle versus the 360, bit of maths, okay. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make it another color. I'm gonna make it this color. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start dragging it out. Actually, I wanna do it the opposite way. I wanna leave it at zero and make this 65. Okay, so the start angle's at zero, the end angle's at um, uh, 65. And I start dragging it out. And it's really hard to do um, by just holding it down. If you hold down the Alt key and the Shift key, and if you're on a Mac, it's Option and Shift key, it'll drag from the center and it'll make a little bit more sense when you're making it. Okay, now so what I wanna do is I'm going to animate it. So it's gonna kinda of start at the top and scoot down and then I'm gonna add a mask to it. So if I need to animate it, I'm going to convert it to a symbol, call it MC Pi Slice, just call it Pi. And what I'm gonna do is, um, a big thing with it is I need to edit the center of rotation, okay? Cause I want it to be able to animate from that point, okay? Not from the center. So I've got him and now I would like to do my animation. So about 20 frames, insert keyframe. And I'm gonna extend the background out because it looks a bit weird without it, up to about 60. I might have to trim this up later on, insert frame. You there. So it's gonna end up there and at the first frame, I'd like it to be starting at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna get him up there, great. And what I'd like to do now, so he starts there, ends there. I'm gonna add my classic twin, lovely. Great, I'm gonna add a bit of easing because I always add easing. I always tend to add this one. The S curve, kind of looks like an S, hopefully. Yeah, that's in there. What I might do is just speed it up a tiny bit. It's a little bit slow. I can trim these off later on. And, um, but yeah, let's go preview in a browser. And, cool. okay, so it's going to come along and then it kind of disappears for the rest of it. So what I want to do is extend it out for the whole length of this. So we're gonna insert frame, just to extend it out. So it slides down and then pauses all the way along there. Great, so the next bit is adding the mask. So I'm gonna add the mask and um, I'm gonna lock that layer just to make sure I'm not messing with it. Remember it doesn't matter what color the fill is for the mask as long as it's green. And knowing which one it is, um, I always forget like, is it this one? Yeah, because that's the window. Think of the mask as the window that people are gonna see through. What I'd also like to do is just make sure it's nice and big. Down this bit here. Okay, you, I'm gonna make sure that it kind of just underneath there, that should work. Okay, so he appears down there, lovely. You can see down at the end there, it's not quite aligned. So I'm just gonna, before I make my mask, test it to make sure it's kind of covering and uncovering everything. That looks like it might work, hopefully. Okay, so then I just need to right click it and test it with a mask. You can see I've kind of messed it up a little bit. There's a little slither left, so I'm gonna have to play around with my mask. Um, yeah, he appears. 
And that's how you do a pie graph. We're gonna go through and fancy it up a little bit, but that's basically it. Okay, um, if you've got lots of slices, you're just gonna have to have lots of pie slices with lots of masks and lots of animations, and maybe time them differently. What we're gonna do is just get it to kind of pop out. And first of all, actually, I'll fix that bit of mask where I can see this. So I am going to unlock the mask layer, and I'm gonna move it down a bit. Okay, and lock it again, just to make sure, yeah, it's completely gone now, awesome. And, and what I would like to do is get it to kind of pop out and some text to appear to get a bit more of an infographic-y feel. So it's gonna pause for a while, a little bit, and then, at about here, insert a keyframe, I'm going to get it to explode out, or just pop out. So I'm gonna insert another keyframe, I'm gonna grab my transform tool, you, he's locked, unlock him. Unlocking it is a bit of a pain because the mask goes and covers it. You'll notice that even if you unlock it and if you preview it, it still goes back to its kind of like how it's meant to be. So it doesn't really matter that they're locked. Okay, it's just previewing in Adobe Animate. It all gets turned on when you leave, okay, or when you publish. So I'm gonna turn them off, turn the eyeball off on mask so I can see what I'm doing. And I'd like you, my friend, to, so it starts there. I want to get it to pop out just a little bit. So it's not gonna go far. Holding shift to make it pops out. Um, yeah, so pop it too much. So it's going to yuke and classic tween pop out. Oh, it should add some easing. It's going to get it to ease in. Just do a little cheap one. Save it. Preview it. Just make sure it's working. Preview loads where you're working because there can be lots of problems. And if you go too far, thinking yeah, I'm the man. I've kind of got it. Or the woman, and you've you've got it all perfect and and you find a preview at the end, you have no idea where you went wrong. Okay, so preview in a browser, like mine, stressing it out by using the screen capture software as well. Come on. Let's hope it doesn't crash. It didn't, lovely. And pops out, nice. A little bit more easing. This is the finessing part. This is the bit where, um, did you have to spend this long doing it? No. Okay, so I'm gonna get it to do this and this. And I'm gonna do it really sharp. So I'm gonna, can you see here, I've got this line that I don't want. And you can either reset it, click. Actually what I might do for a little bit of fanciness is I'm gonna do my little extreme S. What I might do is get it to rebound a little bit. And to rebound with an ease, I'm gonna click anywhere in here so I don't have to hold anything down. It just adds a new keyframe. And one weird thing is, is if you do something that looks like this, I'm gonna drag it down so I can see you. Grab you. How far is this gonna rebound? There's a lot of testing that's gonna to have to happen. Okay, so it's gonna get close. It's gonna actually get right there. Then it's gonna try and rebound. So let's give it a preview. You can see it happens so fast that you can't even see it. So I'm gonna bring this in a little bit and I might have to extend yeah, so it's probably not long enough. So I'm gonna grab this one here and drag it out so there's a bit more time for my animation to happen. And now let's have a look. You, and then, you see the little rubbery bounce there? It's probably a bit long now. Um, so I'm gonna save it, preview in a browser. Hopefully my machine, all the fans are on, I can hear it because of the screen capture stuff. And it worked a charm. You see that little pop? Nothing much, just juk juk. All right, I like it. And the last thing we're gonna do is add some type. So I'm going to, watch this, if I'm here, I did it by instinct because I know it's a problem. If I add a new layer here for my type, it kind of shuffles it into this mask and I'll never see it. It's not what I want. So if you click the top one, add a new layer, it's gonna add a brand new layer, not kind of smushed into this mask. I'm gonna call it type or text even. Where am I gonna start my text? So maybe kind of halfway through that little animation, I'm gonna insert a keyframe, I'm grab my type. Now, what I want to double check is it's always that static text. For whatever reason, it keeps defaulting to dynamic text quite a bit. And um, so, yeah, just make sure it's that static text because dynamic text is a pain. We looked at it earlier. And I'm going to click once. I'm going to call, um, this is the percentage of awesomeness. That's you. I should have made it 100%, <laughs> you're only, you're only uh, what, about 30% awesome, I'm afraid. And it's better than everybody else. Linda are only 10% awesome. So you've got this. 
Where's it gonna go? I didn't really leave enough room. I'm just putting in some returns here just to make sure I can fit it all in. Awesomeness is a bit of a big word. Um, I'm gonna increase it from 100, 300, that's the weight, size-wise. Okay, I shouldn't spend ages on type. Okay, this is kind of turning a bit more of an infographic where you're going through and kind of adding a type and making it bounce and those sorts of things. So, and um, what I'm gonna do is you there, I wanna animate it. So first of all, I need to convert it to a symbol. It needs to be a movie clip. I'm gonna call it MC uh, Awesome. Great MC names here. Okay, so you are gonna start there. I'm gonna get it to maybe Maybe just fade in. So I'm going to get the start here and end pretty quickly. Keyframe. This first keyframe, though, I'd like to select on it and go to alpha. Remember, and then this one, it's 100%. Add my classic tween, classic tween, and it's going to kind of fade in. I never add easing to fades because I never seem to be able to notice it. Save it, preview it, whoosh, whoosh, and it kind of fades in. Oh, it's, I like it, it's kind of cool. And it's green, it's the best kind. All right, so that's how to do a pie chart. Really, you're kind of animating a circle, the pie chart bit, and then you're masking little pieces. Okay, so it's just a nice uh, kind of more complicated version of our really basic mask we did with the porthole that our little monster looked out of. All right, that's gonna be it for pie charts. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right, that's it for the free video. It was pretty good, right? What I really want you to do now is I want you to go and sign up for my full course. Uh, I'll put a link in the description if you're keen. I have loads of other good free stuff, so make sure you subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And yeah, how did I? Good YouTube people.